All right, here are the problems from chapter two for college physics. The first one, the helicopter blade spins at exactly 100 revolutions per minute. Its tip is five meter from the center of rotation. Calculate the average speed of the blade tip in the helicopter's frame of reference. You know, when you're asked to find the speed, it's a distance, total distance divided by total time. But here it's talking about 100 revolutions per minute. First of all, that's not a proper unit because time has got to be measured in seconds. So the first thing you do is change revolutions per minute into seconds. All right, so average speed is total distance by total time. And then distance is the circumference, which is 2 pi times the radius. That's the distance in one rotation. Therefore, in 100 revolutions would be that multiplied by 100. And since time is in minutes, you got to change it into seconds. So that's in seconds. One minute is 60 seconds. And so the average speed is the total distance, which is 100 times 2 pi r there. The radius is 5. And uh, the time is 60 seconds. So you get the average speed. Now to find the average velocity, it's total displacement over total time. And you know that the total displacement is zero because it's returning back as it goes around in circles. It's, uh, it's, it's coming back again and again to the same point, you see. So its displacement is zero, therefore the average velocity is zero. Now on to the second one. You can try to read the problem on your own because you can see the problem. The student is driving from the university uh, to the university from her home, rather, and that was 12 kilometers. The trip took 18 minutes. What was her average speed? So, again, just like this previous problem, find the total distance divided by the total time because that's how you find the average speed. Kilometers you change into meters by multiplying by 1000, which is what I've done here. So now you have it in meter per second. And 18 minutes is 18 times 60 seconds. So that's the answer. In the second part it says, if the straight line distance was 10.3 kilometers in a direction 25 degrees south of east, so this is this is the south that's the east south of east means you go from the east to the south and so that angle must be 25 degrees okay so the angle is 25 degrees and the distance is 10.3 kilometers and the average velocity is total displacement by total time. Change that into meters, multiply by 1000, and time again, 18 minutes, again to seconds, and you, you get your answer. And of course, because it's velocity, you've got to specify the direction. And the, in the C part, it says if she returned home by the same path, seven hours, 30 minutes after, what was her average speed and velocity? Now to find the average speed, you have to add up the distances. This time it's 10.3 multiplied by two because she's coming back. And 7.5 hours, of, let's see, it's seven hours and 30 minutes. So 
obviously I have to multiply it again by 60 so let's see okay again by 60 and I would have to change the answer to 0.7629 meter per second but what's the average velocity of course it is zero because she returns so that's 0.7 meter per 0.76 meter per second finally considering significant figures okay that's kind of messed up so let me just write that all over again Point eight nine meter per second because first time I had made the mistake of using 10.3 because she is returning by the path by the route that she took and it was 12 kilometers so that's why I had to change the answer number three a commuter backs, her, uh, backs out of a garage with an acceleration of 1.40 meter per second squared how long does it take her to reach a speed of 2 meter per second? So just look at the A part. Uh, her initial velocity is 0. And you have the acceleration in proper units. And you have to find the time and the final velocity is given. So when you look at those, you know the Acceleration is change in velocity divided by time, which is final takeaway initial by time, which uh, gives you 2 minus 0 by the time is equal to 1.4. Now rearrange that and calculate. You would get the time to be 1.43 seconds. In the second part, it says if she then breaks to a stop in 0.8 seconds, what is her deceleration? So now the initial velocity is 2 because she's beginning to break when she's already moving at 2 meter per second. And, and the final velocity is 0 because she stops. The time is 0 0.8 seconds and you've got to find the acceleration. Again, the same formula. Just plug those numbers and uh, and calculate, and you will get negative two point five meter per second squared. What does the negative show? It shows that it's a deceleration. So as a matter of fact, her deceleration is plus two point five meter per second squared. Her acceleration is negative, but her deceleration is positive. Number four, here's a question. It says a bullet in a gun is accelerated from the firing chamber to the end of the battle at an average rate of 6.2 times 10 to the 5. So that's 10 raised to 5. Okay, Meter per second squared 4. So that happens in such a small time, you know, the bullet coming out. So that's 8.1 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds. What is its muzzle velocity? That means the final velocity with which it comes out. So again, the initial velocity is zero. The acceleration is given. That's the time. And you're asked to find the final velocity. Isn't that easy? Because we're using the same equation, acceleration, change in velocity by time. But you would have to rearrange that and make the final velocity the subject. And when you do that, this is what you get. I'm just trying to show you how you get that. Okay. And plug in the given numbers.
and you get 502.2 meter per second. Wow, that's fast. Yes, of course, it's supposed to be fast. It's a bullet. It brings us to number five. And in this one, at the end of a race, a runner decelerates from a velocity of 9 meter per second at a rate of 2 meter per second squared. So, when you look at the units, you know, you know, that's velocity, that's our initial velocity, and that's the acceleration, but actually, it's a deceleration, because it says that. So, when you take it in the question, you will have to take A as minus 2 meter per second squared. Why? Because it's a deceleration. And how far does she travel in the next five seconds? All right. So V naught is that. A is 2.00 meter per second squared. And time is. Okay, so now you have to use this equation. Initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half times the acceleration. Remember, that's uh, a negative because it's deceleration. So calculate that carefully because it's a it's two terms and this is negative twenty five, and you get twenty meters. And in the B part, you're asked to find her final velocity. Use this equation. And you know, uh, you get 9 minus 10, which is negative 1 meter per second. And uh, that's why the C part says, evaluate your, the result. Does it make sense? Well, it does not make sense because how can this runner have a negative velocity, which would mean that uh, she started running in the opposite direction, which usually doesn't happen, you know, in a race. Number six. A fireworks shell is accelerated from rest to a velocity of 65 meter per second over a distance of 0 0.250 meter. How long did the acceleration last? So you are asked to find the time. The given quantities, initial velocity is 0. Final is 65.0 meter per second. Displacement is 0. 0.250. You're asked to find the time. If you look at the terms, you understand that you could use this equation where you have the displacement and you take the average velocity and multiply it with time. If you use that, uh, that equation and calculate time, you're going to get it. So this is 32.5. That's why I have 32.5 here. And then divide both sides by 32.5 and you get uh, a small time, of course. Then you have to find the acceleration in the B part for which you use the equation. And you have your answer. It is 8450 meter per second squared. Brings us to the seventh one. In this question calculate the displacement and velocity. Uh, there are actually five times given for a rock thrown straight down with an initial velocity from a bridge. Uh, the roadway of this bridge is 70 meters above the water. So you have to find the displacement and the velocity at different times. I'm just going to explain it for one particular time because it's, everything else is the same. Initial velocity is not zero because it says it's thrown down at 14 meter per second. And, but the acceleration is 9.8 meter per second squared because that's the acceleration due to gravity. Now for 0 0.500 seconds, use the king, which is this equation, I just call it the king, because it's so useful, and plug in the values into that, 
and calculate. Again, it's two terms. Don't get confused because this whole thing gives 1.225 while this is 7. So you get 8.225 meters. And then to find the velocity, use this equation and then put the numbers in. You get 18.9 meter per second. Now, if you could do the same thing for all the others, all the other times, it's just a repetition. And I'm just going to hit this so you see the B part, that's the answer. Those are the answers, rather, that you get. And then uh, you do the same thing with all the others. This is an interesting question, the eighth one. It says, calculate the height of a cliff if it takes 2.35 seconds for a rock to hit the ground when it is thrown straight up from the cliff with an initial velocity of 8 meters per second. Okay. This is interesting because you throw it from, start throwing it from here. The rock goes up, then comes all the way down, and the total time is 2.35 seconds. Got to be careful about this. And uh, you're asked to find the height of the cliff. So you're only asked to find this height, which is the height of the cliff. Okay. Initial velocity, 8 meter per second and acceleration because it's first going up and we're only interested in what's what it is doing at the beginning it's negative 9.8 meter per second squared. the total time is 2.35 seconds and delta x okay the important thing is you realize that this is the equation that you're going to use And then plug it in. You know why you get the 4.9 because it's one half times 9.8. And you do that, you will get minus 8.26 meters. But you're getting a negative because you've got to understand that it was first going up, right? It was first going up and then coming back down. So actually, the height of the cliff is 8.26 meters because when it goes up it's positive that much is negative cancels out and so finally what you have is from here to here which is going down that's why you got a negative I hope you understand that so that's the height of the cliff and then how long would it take to reach the ground if it is thrown straight down with the same speed and that's easy because uh, the initial speed is the same but this time it's going down so acceleration is positive as you can see plus 9.8 and it has to find the time you know delta x now it's 8.26 meters so once again use the same equation put in the values Rearrange it, you get a quadratic equation and uh, try to solve the equation. That's the quadratic formula. Plug in the numbers into that. You get the time. 0 0.72 seconds okay brings us to the ninth one and this question an object is dropped from a height of 75 meters above the ground find the distance traveled during the first second it's dropped so the initial velocity is zero and then you're asked to find delta x T is 1 second, A is 9.8, not a big deal, just plug it into the equation that we've been using. And just be careful when you plug in the numbers, and even right at the beginning, from the beginning of the problem, you got to take care, you know, you need to read it, 
you know, look at the terms, write them down. It's not easy, but you can do it. Now, in the B part, it says, find the final velocity at which the object hits the ground. Okay, so you're looking for the final velocity. So that's the equation. And the initial is zero there. We have the acceleration. And uh, you get 9.8 meter per second. And the C part, find the distance traveled during the last second of motion before hitting the ground. So let's first find the total time taken because we know that it's 75 meters. So we can find the total time using this equation. So you get 15.31, take the square root of that, you will get 3.91 seconds. So you're asked, now what we can do is, we can find the displacement in 2.91 seconds. Because it took totally 3.91 to hit the ground. If you find the displacement in 2.91, and whatever you get here, if you subtract that from 75, you're going to get the distance traveled in the last second. So that's what I'm doing. So you get that as 41.49 meters, therefore the distance in the last second is, is actually the difference between the two, which would be 75 minus 41.49 which gives 33.51 meters. Okay. Uh, going back to the B part, it asked you what's the final velocity at which the object hits the ground. Okay, that's why I drew a circle there. And First, I calculated it for uh, the final velocity after one second, which is not right, you know, because it actually took 3.91 seconds to hit the ground. You are supposed to find the final velocity after 3.91 seconds, so it's 38.3 meter per second. Okay, I apologize for that. I just overlooked that, you know. And then you go to the last question. When you go to the last question, it says... By taking the slope of the curve, uh, verify that the velocity of the jet car is 115 meter per second at t is equal to 20 seconds. And then uh, in the second figure, you have to take the slope and show that the acceleration is 5.0 meter per second squared. Okay, let's go about it. Slope is rise over run, so its slope is delta x over delta t which is 2250 minus 1100. Where did I get that from? What are all these numbers from? If you look at the graph carefully, and it's kind of... Because it says you have to take the slope at 20 seconds, and the 20 seconds is here, isn't it? So the 20 seconds is here. So what I did is... I took two points, one of them is here, 25, and the other point is here. So, you know, I am trying to get the slope, let me, I can, let me try to draw that here, I should be able to draw it. That's what I'm trying to do. So the difference on the x-axis is actually 25 minus 15. If you go from here to here, and then this corresponds to 2250, and this is 1100. If I draw it correctly, that's not so clear, but you understand the idea behind this. So when you do that, you get the slope as 115 meter per second. The same thing for the other one, because the other one is a velocity time graph, you see, velocity and time. 
So if you take the slope, you're going to get the acceleration. So do the same. And uh, you get 5 meter per second squared. So there you are. I was trying to explain this. So I hope you understood this. And uh, thank you. And good luck on the exams.